this year and it was an amazing audiobook and such a wild ride like uh, as someone that grew up with iCarly I would have never imagined but I mean you don't need me to tell you I feel like everyone by now probably knows that this this is a six star read it is just so good and people love it for a reason definitely read it if you haven't yet okay we have two of my favorite romances of the year that I read both by the same author so we'll do them at the same time this is Happy Blaze and Emily Henry sorry what this is Happy Blaze and Book Lovers by Emily Henry the best impeccable my favorite of her work and I read them both this year so hey it was a great year for me um again with some of these books that you've heard me talk about a lot like in recommendation videos and stuff I won't like go too far into detail because I don't want to bore you but wow some of the best contemporary romances on the market I'm an Emily Henry stan okay Next, ooh, let's do Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. This is a, another book that came out this year. My first book by this author. I loved it. Oh, it was just so, so interesting. It's a literary fiction about a white author who steals a novel from one of her Chinese author friends after she dies and it, you're following like such a twisted messed up character but it was so it's like a car crash you can't look away from you know so yeah definitely a six star read just because I will think about it for years and years and years to come I think about it all the time okay another book with characters that I think about all the time we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by DJ Gloon. Oh, this is like a little fantasy. And it's just, it's a big gay hug. And it's so, so fun. And even though these characters are like magical creatures and stuff, they feel so real. And I just loved it. So, okay. Let's do oh, another two romances that I loved, also from the same series. We have Reckless and Heartless by Miss L.D. Silver. These are my favorite books that I read in the Chestnut Springs series. I discovered this romance series this year. They're small town Canadian cowboy romances. Wow, they are so good. Like, so good. I feel like Elsie Silver can do can do no wrong. So both of these are going in the six star tier right next to each other. Yeah. So good. I need to reread them. Like I I, I already want to reread them. Okay. I don't read a lot of historical fiction, but I picked this one up, Any Duchess Will Do, by Tessa Dare, and it's going in my six-star reads because it was my first, but it was also like a five-star, and I loved it. I cried. I laughed. Like, I didn't think I would like it, and so it was just, it's probably the most surprising read that I had in 2023, and for that reason, like, I'm always going to remember it, so it has to go in the six star tier. It's only right. But yeah, I definitely need to get more into historical romance next year because I didn't read any other ones, as you'll see. But that one I loved. So, okay. Then we have Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. If you like romance, this is probably not surprising to see in my six star reads because I feel like every romance girly out there is like loving this book right now for good reason. Oh, for good reason. When and Harriet really did make me believe in 
show-stopping tier. Um, I just had so much fun with these books. These four specifically, I think are our best that I've read. I have yet to give a Sarah J. Mass book a five-star, but these ones came really, really close. Really, really close. I love Dorian and Manon and Rowan and Aelin from Throne of Glass so much, and Nesta is the only character that makes Akatar bearable, in my opinion. Oh, and Asriel, Nesta and Asriel. So, yeah, those are my favorite Sarah J. Mass books so far, but I will be reading Crescent City in 2024, mark my words. So, we'll see where those fall. Okay, another two books in a series that I loved. We have the other two books in the Chestnut Springs, Powerless and Hopeless. Well, actually the other two out of five, so there's one more in another tier, but these are definitely, like, not as good as Reckless and Heartless, but so, so close. I loved Powerless. I think I like Powerless a little bit more than Hopeless, but I loved these two. I think that Hopeless had some of the best spicy scenes, like the bathtub scene. I think about that all the time, and Powerless made me cry because I just loved Jasper and, and Sloane so much. So, yeah, talented, brilliant, incredible. No surprise there. Okay, uh, we already talked about the right move in my six star and the other book in the series that I've read, Mile High. This was a four star, so it was it was close. Very very good. This one is a hockey romance, and she's like a flight attendant. I just definitely didn't like Xander as much as I liked Ryan from The Right Move, wherever it is. Oh, right there. Okay, next. I loved, loved these books, the first two books in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series by Stephanie Garber. We have Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After. This is a YA fantasy series, and the first two books are so fun so, so fun. There's a lot of romance, and uh, I just had the best time with these. Again, I listened to them on audio, had a great time. I think 2023, I really got into my audiobook bag this year. Um, unfortunately, the third and final book <laughs> did not make it into this tier. We'll see where I put it much later in the video. Okay, Next, oh, we have Hot House of Flower by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is like the fifth or sixth or seventh book in like a ten book series that follows this family, this like rich family and their different romances. Um, and I'm currently like making my way through it. And this was definitely the best book from the series that I read this year. This might honestly be my favorite one. I don't know. This one was just really fun. I didn't think I would love it as much as I did. It's age gap, and you're kind of, like, built up for the two characters in this book, like, throughout the other books in the series, and I just think because you wait so long to see them get together, they, it just, the payoff was great, uh, and I didn't expect to like it as much as I did, but uh, I just think about it a lot, and I definitely need to continue this series in 20. Okay, next. Oh, we read this for my book club. This is Honey and Spice by Bolu Babalola. This is a fake dating college romance, and it was so fun. So fun. These characters were so good. 
it was good. I think it's a good way to like set up and start a fantasy series, but again, very short, not super impactful in the end. If you've read the first book, I think it's called like A Crown of Oaths and Curses. If you've read that and you liked it, let me know in the comments. Give me like inspiration to pick it up in 2024. Okay, I'm gonna reapply my lip balm while we talk about the next one, if that's okay. So the next book in this tier, oh, let me actually move my webcam down a little bit. There we go, so you can see what we're doing. Okay, the next book in this tier is The No Show by Beth O'Leary. This is like pitched as a romance, but it read a lot more as just like literary fiction. It was fun. It was interesting. Like I couldn't put it down. It's about this guy, Joseph, who on Valentine's Day stands up three different women and you go through all their different perspectives and all their different lives. And like, as you read, you slowly figure out how they're all connected and how Joseph like got involved with all three of them. So it's pitched as a romance book, but really it's more of like a literary fiction with like mystery and romance like thrown in. Um, and it, it was good. It was a fun time, a good time, but not like my favorite. And it wasn't like, it was like not very romantic. I don't think it should be a romance. I don't know why it's, I think it's because Beth O'Leary usually writes romance, but to me, this is like literary fiction vibes. Okay. Then we have Misfit by L. Kennedy. Look, this book is like, it's hot garbage. It's hot garbage. Okay, like realistically, this is a book about this like prep academy and it's just a bunch of rich, snobby new adults and there's a bunch of different romances and stuff. This like one, one of them is like hooking up with like two of his teachers at the same time. Like, I don't know, there's just so much drama and stuff. It's trash, but it's fun. It's my trash. And it's a good time. Uh, call me, call me Oscar the Grouch or whatever the fuck, because like, it was fun. I need to continue this series. It's the only L. Kennedy book that I've like really enjoyed. Um, not really for the romance, but just for the drama. For the drama. Okay, next we have Page Boy by Elliot. This is his memoir that was released this year. I listened to the audiobook. He did a great job narrating it. Um, it was a good old time. The author's note, like, made me cry. Like, right off the bat, I was obsessed. And I feel like this is one of those celebrity memoirs that really doesn't feel like there was a ghostwriter. Like, it really feels like a stream of consciousness. Elliot just manages to recall and discuss so many different memories from his childhood and like how they impacted him, how they shaped him and all the different details that he talks about like growing up in Canada and stuff like there was just so many specific things that it's like there's no way a ghostwriter could have written this I don't know I just thought it was good but it is a little bit lower because I think the organization was a little bit lacking, like, the book would jump all over the timeline, and I just think, like, it could have been a little bit better organized in terms of, like, a memoir when you're telling your life story, or you're talking about, you know, something that happened. I just didn't like the way the book was organized, but, yeah. Okay, next we have a, I, is this middle grade? I think this is a middle grade book. This is Spiderwick Chronicles, book number one, The Field Guide, by Tony Ditterlizzi and Ollie Black. I love Ollie Black. We've already, we've already figured that out from my Six Star Reads tier. Uh, this is our little middle grade series. I never read it when I was a kid, so I'm going back and reading it. I only did the first book, but it was a good old time. It was really fun. It gave me, like, a series of unfortunate events 
as you discover it with the main character, it is a good time. You're like, what the hell is going on? It is wild. But I did love the ending, and I do think that the writing was a little bit, like, maybe just a little bit too smart for me. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't understand a lot of the points that Mona Awad was trying to make, and like, walking away from the book, I still don't know what she was trying to tell me. But I had a good time, so... Beloved book, Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yar. 
always read a Colleen Hoover book to like get out of a slump and it, it'll do the trick every time because even though a lot of the times they're hot garbage, they are really fast paced and like easy to fly through. So I did pick up Confess like in the middle of the year when I was going through a slump and it was okay. Like I've read much worse <laughs> by Colleen. This one is about this guy like has an art gallery and people come and they leave confessions and then he turns their confessions into art and she this girl starts like working for him there's a little bit of like a, a suspense like mystery throughout that is was fun i didn't really care for the romance at all though so yeah mid very mid another romance this is practice makes perfect by sarah adams this is a clean closed door um grumpy sunshine romance um I this is like right in the middle okay because the hero in this book Will he's like a bodyguard he is like just my type and he's super nice and cute and like great okay but Annie the heroine she even though she's like a 27 year old woman like she acts like a child and I, I just couldn't it. Like, I just think the author took Grumpy Sunshine a little too far because, like, why are you 27 with a swear jar? A swear jar. Like, I'm dead serious. So, okay, next we have a love letter to Whiskey. This is like an angsty, will they, won't they romance that just follows two characters over like years and years and years and years. Um, and it's just, it was okay. Like, I feel like I couldn't really get into it because the way that they meet, like, he dates her best friend first. And, like, that's just some girl code that, like, just does not work with, like, I don't know, all of my, like, friends' exes, I just kind of see them as losers. Like, I don't know, is that just me? I was like, I, what, it, like, I don't know. So, there was, like, drama and it was, like, entertaining, but nothing to write home about. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, L. Kennedy returns with The Chase. This is the first book in the Briar U series, and uh, it was shaping up to be really good. I was loving it, okay? It's about this nerdy, like, gamer, programmer, shy guy, and she is like this popular, outgoing, like, baddie, okay? And I was like, oh my god, that's literally my relationship dynamic. And for the first, like, 30%, I was live, laugh, loving. And I was like, this is gonna be my favorite El Kennedy book so far. And then, the guy calls her a bitch. And like, not even, I don't know, there were just some things that he did that I was like, He does have character growth, obviously, by the end of the book and stuff, but I don't know. It just, there are certain things I'm like, why did L. Kennedy have to make him do that? Like, we didn't need to do that, but either way. Next, we have a mystery thriller. This is Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. We already talked about Bright Young Women, which I gave six stars. I loved it. So then I was like, okay, I need to read more by this author, and I picked this one up. It's a Netflix movie as well, and honestly, like, the only review I need to give is, like, just watch the Netflix movie. I just think Jessica Knoll made the main character way too unlikable, and the ending was weird. Next, we have Tattered Stars by Catherine Cowles. This is a romantic suspense, and it was, like, the first in a series, the first read from this author, and it was just okay. Like, I think my issue was, like, I just couldn't really connect to either character, but if you like romantic suspense, this one's kind of about, like, this religious cult and this girl whose dad, like, kidnapped this guy's sister, and that's how it starts, so it's, it's dark, it's twisted, but I just didn't care about their romance supposed to be like enemies to lovers but like the enemies part was over in like 20 pages it, it felt like 
book, like everyone says, is like so sad. It makes them cry. So I went into it expecting to cry, expecting to be sad, expecting to have my heart stomped on. And it was so fucking forgettable. It's just about these teenagers who like can't just admit that they like each other and then the guy like gets hit by a car. It's like wah wah, wah wah, literally, wah wah. That's how I feel. Wah wah. But you know he gets hit by a car in chapter one, okay? Before anyone comes for me in the comments and is like, Haley, you're spoiling the book. No, babe. You know that he dies. Chapter one. Chapter one. It's called If He Had Been With Me. Like, if he had been with me, then he would have lived. That's literally. So I'm not even spoiling it. So it's like, if you're gonna tell me that he dies on page one, why would I then, like, get invested in their romance? You gotta pull, like, a John Green Fulton R. Stars moment. Like, that shit fucked me up. This. <sighs> Boring. Okay, sorry, that was probably not very relaxing. I just, I start to get passionate when I talk about books I don't like. Can you tell? Okay, next. Oh, a book that is just... So, I DNF'd this. That's why it's going here. I'm, like, tempted to put it in. These authors owe me therapy. But I have another Jessa Hastings book in there, so we'll, we'll let Daisy Hates off the hook a little bit because it wasn't as bad as the other book we're going to talk about. Um, this is the book after Magnolia Parks. This is when Jessa Hastings decided to introduce footnotes, which I will never shut up about. And also, I just think the characters in the Daisy Hates books, Daisy, Christian, they are literally like Walmart versions of Magnolia and BJ. Like, it's just another toxic rich couple, but like way less interesting. And like, how did you add guns to a story, but also make it less interesting at the same time? That is magnificent. Okay, another DNF. This is Twisted Eight by Anna Wong. I had never read anything by Anna Wong, and I just picked this up and I started it. I will say it's like the third book in a series um, of interconnected standalones, but I just did not care about the characters, and I think I need to go back and like read the first book. But then everyone hates the first book. Everyone dislikes the first book, so yeah, I don't know. I just I DNF'd it. I I don't think I'm gonna read this series though. Honestly, I just don't think it'll be for me. It was like an enemies with benefits romance, and that sounded interesting. That's why I picked it up. But then I was like, oh shit. And 
I got like 70% of the way through and I was like, babe, where? <laughs> Where's the romance? It was focused so much on this random plot and like the main character was more in love with her best friend back home than she was. Or like little BFF she was trying to say or like best friend like got into a coma and she cared more about that than like any romance. Like I, I don't know. I just, it was boring. I didn't care for it personally. But other people like it. If you like like fairy tale, really whimsical writing, you might enjoy that. But I don't think it was for me. Okay, then we have a DNF. Uh, at the time, I was kind of in a fantasy slump and I had just read like a lot of fantasy books. And so my book club was reading The Serpent in the Wings of Night and I tried to read it. I got like halfway through. 
twist was a romance and I just remember I only managed to read like a few chapters because they kept mentioning TikTok, 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 TikTok because one of them had a secret TikTok account and I just like could not do it so I DNF'd it. Collide. I got an arc and I was so excited. It's a hockey romance. I was thinking it was going to give me ice breaker vibes and it was boring. I literally don't remember a single thing that happened and I was like at this point, there's so many hockey romances that I feel like you gotta give me something new. And then The Stranger Upstairs was just like, yeah, another average mystery thriller about this couple who like buys this house and thinks that they hear things. And I was just like, I didn't care. Then I read in like a summer haze when I was smoking probably too much weed. I read, not one, not two, not three, but four books by Jay Bree. Okay, I read Just Drop Out, and then I read books one through three of the Bonza Die series, and honestly, they were all just so average. The writing was bad, if I'm honest, and the plot was boring, and I just, I just, I was reading these to pass the time. Honestly, I don't even know. These were nowhere near as good as the two novellas that we talked about earlier. So, I think if you're going to check out Jay Bree, I definitely recommend like sticking to her newer stuff. Um, because, I don't know, these just were not great. They're all like new adult uh, reverse harems. And, uh, yeah, not not good. Okay, um, we're gonna have to do some overlapping here because I've got a lot of books that need to go in this tier. Next, we have Lessons in Corruption by Gianna Darling. I DNF'd this because the love interest, the guy in it was like 18 and I was just like, oh, that's like a little too young. So, I don't know, just wasn't feeling it at the time. I like, I like my love interest to be like at least 20 years old, please. Yeah. Then we have Good Game by Madison Fox. I DNF'd this because, like, at the time, I wanted a slow burn. And I remember that they were, like, finger banging or something within, like, the first 50 pages. And I was like, okay, this is not, not the slow burn I'm looking for. But, um, I am gonna give it another try, I think, in 2024. So, we'll see. Hopefully, I end up loving it. Uh, next, I was so disappointed by this. It is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. This is a horror short story about these two women who meet in like a chat room online. And there was nothing horrible, horrible or horrifying about it because these two women had no personalities. None. Like, if I didn't have the usernames of each woman for each message, like, I would have never, ever known who was talking to who. Like, they were just bland-ass characters with no personalities. It just felt like it was just trying to get shock value out of nothing, pretty much. Okay, next, we have Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. Look, this book does not deserve to be on this tier, okay? But, I read it, I gave it a high rating, I remember I, like, I had an ARC copy, and I wanted to make sure I got my review up before, like, the book came out, and so I binged this book in, like, a day. And now when I look back, I remember so little. I know they worked on a wedding together at Second Chance and she was a florist, or he was a florist and she was the wedding planner, but like, as far as the actual romance and like the scenes of them getting together, like, I literally don't remember. I, I forgot so much of what happened in this book, so it's going in forgettable, not because it's not worth your time, but because I legitimately, like, forgot what happened, and I need to reread it. You know, that happens. You can't, you can't remember them all. <laughs> okay, and the last book in the Forgettable Dear is gonna go to Hate by Tate James. This is the first book in the Madison Gate series. This was pitched as, like, a dark, wild revenge romance story. And, I mean, it's called hate. You know, like, I'm expecting, like, hate. I love me a good enemies to lovers. Like, I want y'all to be 
know everyone says Zayd Ryerson wears skinny jeans, and that's true, but so does Zayd Meadows. And someone's gotta say it. Okay, next. L speaking of Zayd Ryerson, oh, wow, I mean, we probably could have guessed that this was gonna flop, right? I don't know. Fourth Wing was great, it was a good old time, but Iron Flame, the sequel, was a rushed hot garbage mess that needed an editor so badly. And yeah, it, it's tragic. I think we all had higher hopes for that book, but like, I, th the ball was dropped with Iron Flame. I don't want to read about miscommunication and the same plot as the first book, recycled with more typos. I'm good. Another release in a series that was a big ass flop, but this one, I actually really thought that I was gonna love this one. I thought this one was gonna be like one of my top reads, so this one was far more disappointing, but far better quality, okay? A much better book overall than a lot of the ones on this tier, but I've gotta put it on here because it's true. Stephanie Garber owes me therapy for a curse for true love. This was the highly anticipated finale of the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, which, if we remember, I put in the talented, brilliant, incredible tier. And so I was so excited for this third book. I was so excited to finally get the happy ending and for everything to be wrapped up and to get all my questions answered. And one of those things happened. One of those three things happened. And it was not enough. This, this book just fell completely disjointed from the first two books and it kind of like put a bad taste in my mouth and ruined the series for me. And I'm sad about it. So, Stephanie Garber, call my lawyers. Just kidding. Just kidding. Next, we have the book that taught me that billionaire romance is not my genre. Okay. Book, least romantic romance I've ever read. Declan, the love interest, is a billionaire who treats the main main character, Iris, his assistant, like garbage, garbage rat, garbage sewer rat. I hate Declan. Uh, he gave me an ick. So, no, absolutely not. Like, if you're gonna do a billionaire romance, make the billionaire like spend all his money on me. Don't make the make me work on holidays. Like, I thought this was a romance book. I want to escape reality. <gasps> oh, Miss Jessa Hastings. This is the worst book I read this year. It just is. If you saw my top 10 worst books of the year, you would know this was number one. This was the creme de la creme. Shit of the shit. Hot garbage of them all. Never by Jessa Hastings. This is a Peter Pan retelling. And it was awful. It was so bad. The footnotes were back. And this awful Scottish accent that she tried to give Jameson a hook. And I just bad, a bad book all around. If you want to see me rip it to shreds, just check out my vlog channel. But like, don't waste your time. Just go watch the original Peter Pan movie. Like, if you're going to retell a classic story, at least try to fix it or make it better. Just Hastings just made it worse. I'm gonna be honest. Next, we have Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. This is a dark romance about these two people who get kidnapped by a serial killer and, like, they escape and then manage to, like, recover and, like, fall in love and whatever. Okay? But, like, I need therapy from this book because I hated our main characters more than I hated the fucking serial killer in the book. Like, I'm not saying I loved the serial killer. It wasn't like he was my favorite character. But like, you know the characters are bad when you're like, well, you're kind of in the same league as this murderer. They were just so rude. The guy was a victim blamer. He was always slut shaming her. And she was just like, the guy is her sister's wife. 